So my name is Jess Bradford. I'm from the Future Students team, so I can help you with any admissions-based questions you might have toward the end of the session. Uh, in a moment, I'll hand you over to Professor, Pre sorry, Professor Sharnika Karunasekra, who is going to talk to you all about computing and information systems um, and the different masters we have on offer here at the university. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people here today. Ashanika, if you wouldn't mind just flicking to the next yeah. slide, I might just talk about the Engine IT community for okay. a couple of minutes. Thank you. So if you're not part of the engineering and IT community, this is a club that's been set up by the Faculty of Engineering and IT for current undergraduate students who are an engineer or an IT professional. So as a member, you'll receive access to personalized consultations with our team uh, and the latest news about events like this one. But we also run barbecues and social events and there are opportunities to network with industry and other students on the same pathway as you. So if you haven't joined, uh, I encourage everyone to do so. It's absolutely free uh, and let your friends know about it too. Okay, that's enough from me. I'll hand over to Sharnika now. Okay, thank you, Jill. Okay, so I'm assuming most of you are in uh, an undergraduate degree with us and doing some form of information technology, but just to make it complete, I'll talk to you about what information technology is and then I'll get into the different courses we have on offer for you at a master's level. So as you know, information technology is everywhere today. It's revolutionized in the way people work. So from the time you wake up and get onto your mobile phone, Google, do all that, there's not a minute in our lives that we are not interacting with information technology. And then information technology is not just to do with communications. It's in medical devices. It's everywhere. So that is why information technology has become so important. And many students are looking at options of studying information technology. And here at Melbourne, the way you study information technology is either through a major in one of our degrees or as breadth or in a diploma. So there are in Melbourne University, as you know, we have a few basic degrees, Bachelor of Science and Bachelor of Designs are the ones that have a pathway or a major in computing. In the Bachelor of Science, it's called the Computing and Sustainability software systems major. And in the Bachelor of Design, there's a computing major. Both these are the most technical majors that cover the major part of computing. So they are the most technical and most computer heavy, IT heavy majors that you will be considering if you are looking at an IT career. However, it's not limited to that. There are different ways you can study IT, maybe not as deep as the two majors I just described. So in the Bachelor of Science, there is a data science major, which looks at data processing. We'll talk about what that is in a minute, then mechatronics and spatial systems. So as you go down this list that I'm going through now, the amount of computing gets lesser. So again, in the Bachelor of Design, the computing degree is more technical. Digital technologies is more focused on human interaction and spatial is more focused on uh, data, which is spatial, which has a location. And then if you don't want to do IT to that depth or make it a major in your degree, you can do IT as breadth. This is Melbourne model. In Melbourne model, we have breadth studies, so you can do up to six subjects of breadth and you can fit in IT there. And also, if you want a little bit more of IT, but you don't want it to be a major, you can have an extra semester and do a diploma in computing, which is more or less taking these 75 points or the six subjects, adding two more and making it a 100 point degree. Okay. So after you do undergraduate studies, either through a major or through a diploma in IT, we offer many different master's courses. And I have listed all of them here. And again, I have listed them from the least technical 
to the most technical if you go through these masters degrees. And I've separated out this ideally graduate certificate is only 50 points. A graduate diploma is 100 points, which is eight subjects. But the focus today will be these master's degrees. And as I mentioned, least technical to most technical. Now, master of information systems is more, when I say least technical, it's to do more with people. And as you go more technical, it's to do more with IT and technology. And in the next slides, I'll go through each one of them in detail. So when you talk about an IT solution or an IT system, we said IT is used everywhere. One aspect of IT is IT and how people use IT, how businesses use IT. So the people side of IT, how do you take an existing business process and make it a information technology based or software system based system like an e-commerce system, knowledge management, all these technical solutions, they are to do with how people interact with information technology. And those are covered in an information systems degree. And here we have a master of information systems. And the focus is to give that skill set that is required to deal with people, understand their requirements and business processes and map them to, um, to a master's course, which is specializing in information systems. And there are two streams to it, a professional stream and a research stream. In the professional stream, you're looking at going out and working in the industry. And in the research stream, you're interested in going to a PhD and getting more research skills. Okay, so this is accredited by the Australian Computer Society. So that is more on the people side. Now, the next one is data science. Now, when you talk about IT solutions, we know that today you and I or people generate a lot of data. When you use a mobile phone, when you are getting directions on a Google map or when you are doing exercise and your Fitbit is tracking your data, that's all data. And then there are those camera systems that are installed everywhere, streaming data, getting videos, all that is data. And this data has a lot of valuable information valuable information for businesses and for governments and everybody. So data science is about how to get insights from this data through data processing. And that is the focus of a data science degree. So we do have a master of data science. And as you can imagine, when it comes to data processing, it needs computing and it also needs those mathematical skills. So this is a joint degree by computer science and mathematics, and it combines statistics and data processing, machine learning. And that degree has a year long industry project, just like many other degrees we have, but the focus is more on data, not on the systems or people. So that's the difference between the data science compared to the information systems what that we talked about. So people who are interested in this type of degree are people who like statistics. They like to look at data patterns and process data, find interesting information through processing, either using mathematical techniques or uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence techniques. And the next degree that we have is more technical. Now we are going towards the system style, program development, writing code, developing systems, working with hardware. So Master of Information Technology is a course that you can take if you have completed one of our majors, that the computing and software systems major, you can complete this master's in one and a half years. So the idea is to give you technical skills to solve technical problems in different domains. And this degree has different streams of specialization. So specialization is a group of subjects that focus in a particular area. So artificial intelligence, computing, cybersecurity, distributed computing, and human computer interactions. So these are five areas that you can choose to focus on, but computing is the most general one where you don't have a specific focus. You can get more 
subjects in any area you like. Okay, so somebody who is doing this degree should be one who is ready to go into industry and work with software systems, write code, test code, or look at um, uh, designing software. Okay, so this is accredited by Australian Computer Society. Okay, so that's our third degree. Now we get even a bit more technical, right? So for somebody who has completed a major in computing and software systems, this is a two-year degree that you are looking at in the discipline of software engineering. So what is software engineering? If you consider this IT area, IT area is about developing software. But when it comes to developing software, which are large scale software, like if you think of Google that you're interacting with, it's a large scale software systems run, system running on many different servers dispersed around the world. And you don't even know where you're connecting to when you connect. Similarly, Facebook, a lot of the IT solutions that you're using are large scale software systems used by millions of users simultaneously. So designing, developing such a system requires that engineering thinking. What is the engineering thinking? That's about thinking of a very large problem and solving it in a way that end users will be happy to use it. So it requires the end-to-end -end analysis, understanding the user requirements, designing in a way that it will scale out, meaning it can support a large number of customers, and then giving interfaces that are useful for users that they will use, they will be happy using. So that end-to-end -end cycle of software development is handled by software engineering. So complex, large software systems, end-to-end -end development is the focus of software engineering. So the master of software engineering we offer is about that. So because that industry aspect is for very important, this degree has a lot of project-led teaching. So we have at least um, eight, four subjects that are completely project-based, not just project-based, projects which are with external industry clients. And then we also have many core subjects that teach you the skills related to software requirements analysis, design, testing, uh, implementation, and also project management. How do you manage a large scale project? So this is giving you the skills that you want to be to be a software engineer, not just a developer, right? And also similar to the Master of Information Technology, this particular course also has specializations, artificial intelligence, business, cyber, human computer interaction, the same kind of specializations are there. Now, what is a specialization? It is a set of subjects you can do, choose to do, in addition to getting the core software engineering skills, so that when you go to industry, you have the core software engineering skills, but you might have a specialization in artificial intelligence. So somebody hiring you for developing a large scale software systems system related to having a artificial intelligence application, then you'll be suitable to go there, okay? And the good thing about it is when you choose this degree, you don't have to choose the specialization. You can do one year of study and decide on the specialization. And also, given that this is an engineering degree, in addition to the Australian Computer Society, this is accredited by Engineers Australia and the European uh, Engineering Association, Euroes. Okay, so, so there's a good reason if you want to be a software engineer working in Australia or outside in a large company, uh, software engineering is the one to consider. Then we get to the final master's degree, the computer science. And as you can see from the name, it's not a engineering degree, it's not a information technology, it's a science degree. What does that mean? It is about the research side of computing. So if you want, if you have completed the degree and you feel that you want to go deep into some problem which has not been still solved, but that is where research is important, 
you will do a master of computer science and in the master of computer science it's a two year degree so even if you complete a uh, major here you'll have to spend two years doing a master of computer science but one whole year is a research project so in this research project you will focus on a problem that is not solved yet but try to read the literature understand what the state of the art is and develop a software solution a solution for that and it, it will be like a research paper that you will aim for in here now this is the typical path a lot of students take when they are interested in pursuing a phd in an it related discipline but having said that the other degrees master of software engineering and mit and mis all those also allow you to you are eligible to apply to do a phd at the end of those degrees as well but this computer science degree because it has one whole year of research sets you up better in terms of your research training and understanding of the problems if you are trying to do a phd and having said that this completing a computer science degree doesn't limit you to research only because there are many companies that are now looking for uh, people who have done research in their degrees because the type of problems they handle in industry are not straightforward software development there are things that require uh, some research especially in the uh, current time where artificial intelligence is getting a lot of focus they like people who have research skills to handle deeper problems okay so that's the computer science discipline and the master of sorry master of computer science is basically developing those skills through a one year research project and a pathway to the phd okay so why would you consider doing a master of masters in an it related discipline and i don't think i have to even tell you this the demand for ict professionals is increasing there's more and people asking for the graduate degree you get some skills however when you do a master's you are better prepared for industry problems so our master's students are well sought out in industry and these figures that i'm not going to go through the one by one shows the that the demand is increasing and it will continue to increase and what type of jobs what type of companies what type of job roles now it depends on the degree you have done and more importantly your interests because if you look at this list you can see every industry more or less is represented here most companies large companies that you know of are represented here and the job role will depend on your specialization right so industries business financial games entertainment health media this kind of covers all industries you would know of right and then the companies what we have listed here are the big companies that you may have heard of but there's no limit to this list and when you come and look at the job roles these are typical roles that you will see that are displayed or advertised in seek and other places but the type of job that is suitable for you will depend on what degree you got however you might not be limited to a particular job because you got a particular degree so if you talk about python developer a data science graduate can be a python developer uh, an mit graduate can be one software engineer graduate can be a python developer and a computer science graduate so if you look at software engineer developer most of the time you would need a software engineering degree but a master of it degree also will give you a developer job data scientist again a data science degree will be useful but a computer scientist can be suitable to go to a data science job and this business intelligence consultant this is very much of a information systems type role so you if you have an information this systems degree it consultant and business analyst these are the type of roles you have okay so 
how do you get there during our degree we give you a lot of options to find your future employer right so internships is an option that is available for you or in all of these masters so you can start, do internships you can choose the company where you want to do the internship that way you understand the company better and the company understands you better and that will prepare you for uh, a career and also there's a lot of career seminars uh, industry coming and doing recruitment and talking about their businesses so you get a lot of opportunity to interact with industry to find your job if you are in the degree so employment outcomes uh, so you can see in terms of where we are ranked in terms of employment outcomes right graduate employment employability number seven in the world worldwide and most of our graduates find jobs within the first four months of employment and this shows you how many graduates we have placed in different kinds of internships over the years so this shows you the entry requirements of the different types of master's degree. So even if you're not doing an IT degree currently or a major in IT, if you have done two programming subjects and two mathematics subjects during your course, you will qualify for a three-year master of software engineering. However, if you have completed our major, it will go down to two years. Similarly, master of information technology, it has less stringent requirements you need only some programming background no mathematics required you will do a two-year degree and same with master of information systems but um, with master of information technology if you have completed our major you need only 1.5 years to complete it but in all these different courses you have a VAM requirement so make sure that you are focusing on getting the right VAM to enter these courses right and master of computer science again it requires you to complete our major and it's a two-year degree so breakthroughs so for bcom subjects so if you are doing a bcom you have the option to try some of the subjects in our master's degrees or do some of our subjects so that you can get extra points to when you enter the master's you don't have to complete three years but you might not be able to complete in two years. You can do 2.5 years by choosing the right subjects. So fees and funding, I'm not going to go through this because this information is available for you on the website. And that brings me to the end of my presentation and I'm happy to take questions. Happy to open up for questions. Anybody has questions? If nobody has a question to start off, I might just uh, give you a couple that uh, people wrote in their registration, Shanika. So the first one oh, yeah. was, uh, what are some of the content covered in software engineering? I think we've sort of answered okay. that. So that yeah i can go through that again if you want to because i'm the i've been the coordinator for the software engineering degree for a long time i'm just giving it up this year so software engineering the main focus is core subjects right so more than other it degrees we have subjects which are very software engineering focused so you'll learn uh, software testing software requirements analysis architecture design modeling and modeling and um, how to do high integrity systems, systems that require safety. So they are all core subjects. However, we also have space for that specialization in addition to the core, but the main differentiating feature is the, are those client focused projects. So you will do uh, two semester long subjects where you are working on software solutions in groups for external clients. And then finally, the final year, you have a year long project where you are designing a software solution for a real world problem in a large group. Okay? And in those projects, you will learn not just the tools and technologies, but the processes 
agile processes. You would have heard of this uh, agile scrum. You'd get exposed to all these through these projects. Thanks, that's great. Um, another question, someone's typed in the chat, what's the difference between the Master of Software Engineering and Master of IT? Yeah, so just like I said just now, Master of Software Engineering, because it is an engineering degree, there are very specific subjects you have to do to get accreditation as an engineer. As I listed that as core subjects, which is required subjects. So you are, you are required to those do those subjects to get a software engineering degree. But the master of IT is a little bit more flexible. They don't have software engineering subjects. You have more freedom in choice of your degrees, but what it doesn't give you is that end-to-end -end software development experience. Did I answer you that question or do you have further questions on that? Yeah, um, I was just uh, wondering what's the difference in terms of the content or the stuff that you learn between the two masters. Yeah, so in the MIT, you would not learn software engineering. You wouldn't learn how to gather requirements from a client and write it in a way that it's a software solution. You wouldn't learn how to take a customer problem and try to do an architectural solution for it or model a particular domain because it's MIT doesn't focus on the development life cycle, whereas software engineering does. Okay, so uh, the focus on process because software engineering is about developing large scale software systems that are used by a large number of end users. Yeah. All right, thank you. Any other questions? I do have a question in the chat. Uh, are there any scholarships available for prospective graduate students? Uh, I can answer this one if you like. Yeah, so please, yeah. All applicants for grad courses in engineering IT who are offered admission are automatically considered for a scholarship. So you don't have to submit a separate application or anything. Um, the scholarships are awarded solely on the basis of academic merit to high achieving students. Um, they're all partial scholarships, so they won't cover 100% of the tuition fees, uh, but they range from 5000 to 20000 um, I'll put a link in the chat for more details about our scholarships. There are also other university-wide scholarships you can apply for, and some of those do need a separate application, and they might be related to accommodation or other certain uh, things. So um, I'll put that in the chat now. Uh, while I do that, I'll just check the other questions we had. Someone wants to know, what is the challenge about studying IT programs with a non-IT background? Okay. So, depends on how prepared you are to learn the programming, because if you consider, if you consider the Master of Information Systems, which is the most people-oriented degree we have, you need very little IT background for that because it is not about programming. It is about understanding how IT systems work and how people interact with them. Now, if you're considering MIT, Master of Software Engineering and Master of Computer Science, you have to be ready to learn the information technology side. So let's start with Master of Information Technology. We only require you to have done one programming type subjects at a, at a university level. So the reason why we want you to do that is because that way you know, we know that you have done something and you have enjoyed it and you know the basics of what programming is. But in our foundation year, because if you have only done one subject and you are entering the two year mass MIT, you will have a full foundation year and the first semester is about teaching you programming. So we have four subjects that teach you step by step how to program, assuming that you have done a bit. And with that, students pick it up because those subjects are pitched at a level, assuming that you're not coming from an IT background. Now, if you're if you are coming from a non-IT background and you still you want to do software engineering, the requirements are a little bit higher because it's a more technical degree. So you would have to have done two programming subjects and two mathematics subjects. 
Uh, now, a lot of the time, the people who go to this software engineering degree, they are students who have done some other kind of engineering degree, and they have done the mathematics, and they have got exposed to some programming, then they can do a three-year engineering degree, which is a software engineering degree. But to go to the Master of Information Technology, you don't require as much IT, but one subject is a requirement. Any more? No more questions? Okay. Uh, no. So maybe because there are no more, not many questions, can we ask the, we have five participated, right? What degrees are, does anybody want to tell us what degree you are doing now and what was your motivation to come here? You can type Somebody it in wants. the chat if you want. Yeah. Everybody's. Okay, so you're doing the major, right? If you're doing the major, you have two options open. One is the two-year Master of Software Engineering. The other one is the one-and-a-half-year MIT. And uh, yes, for a lot of students at the end of three years in the Computing and Software Systems major, you might be employable. And but then doing a master's definitely has a benefit. Yes, I understand it's another two year commitment, but uh, having a master's in the long run will help you go up in the career faster. Anybody else? So we have someone doing computing and software systems as their major. So what, which because master's course are you interested in? Yeah. MJ? And then we also have Manfred who's uh, graduated from the Bachelor of Design, majored in landscape architecture, um, but has an interest in tech and took many subjects in digital technologies major. Okay. And so in the digital technologies major, if you took some programming subjects you can do a MIT and you can get credit for it and also a MIT HCI stream is a good one for you to consume an interaction side right user interface design usability all that type of things so that's definitely one you can consider but if your goal is to stretch yourself and you want to uh, go and do a master of engineering degree then the question you would have to think about is have you do you have the mathematics if not you might not be eligible for that but if you have mathematics that option is also open Benji is saying what are the options I have after graduation <coughs> even if you do a MIT or graduation I'm assuming with a master's right Benji is that you what you're asking So if it is after a master's, as you can see from the statistics, our master's graduates find employment very fast. It is for them to choose what area they want to go to, but it depends on your interests. If you're interested in the financial area, you can find, go to banks to find employment. If you're interested in more consulting type of jobs, Deloitte and all these type of consulting companies hire graduates and they place you to do consulting for their clients and then if you want to do core development there are a lot of IT companies including like Atlassian, uh, Google, Microsoft they're all looking for uh, qualified master's graduates. Okay so Manfred if you applied for MIT and you have Comp and uh, 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 ten thousand one, and you have a VAM of sixty five. I think you should have you have a good chance to get to the MIT. And MIT is a good degree because you can choose the specialization. I said HCI because you had interest in that area, but you don't have to be limited to HCI. There are many specializations. 
and we can guide you through that if you're interested. Hey, thanks, Anika. I think that was very assuring to hear. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, so if you don't have any more questions, should we close? If there's session? no further questions, we can finish up the session a bit early today. It was a small group. Um, if you do have any other admissions questions, I'll just post a link uh, to make a booking with the future students team. Uh, I've just posted in the chat now, if you have any admissions -y kind of questions, questions about uh, tuition fees and that sort of thing, feel free to book in a session with us and we can chat to you more about your situation. Um, otherwise, I'd like to thank Professor Sharnika Karunasekra for your wonderful presentation and the q and I think everybody got a lot of out of that. Uh, answered some great questions okay. so thanks very much thank you very much thanks for participating and hope to see you in our degrees bye everyone bye bye thank you bye